This time on Rad Rat Video, we're gonna do a full review of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel about skateboarding where I play skateboarding video games, I do reviews of stuff, I even do some actual skateboarding every now and then. Now, I review games from the perspective of someone who's been skating for 20 years myself, and I started skateboarding because of Tony Hawk 2. So this series has had a lot, uh, a big role in my life and I'm a big fan of it. I still play it all the time. You see challenge runs on my channel of me playing it in different weird and unique ways. So I was really skeptical about this game when it was first announced because my criteria for it being good is that it's at least equal, if not better, in every category. Graphics, no problem. Sound, probably not a big problem. Um, soundtrack, you know, was the only thing to be concerned about there. Uh, but what about the gameplay? What about the animation and all that kind of stuff? And so this game is successful, I think. But is it worth your time? Yes, but. It's a small but, but we're gonna get into it. Let's take a look at the game engine. In Tony Hawk 2, they added in manuals, but there were no revert, spine transfers, wall plants, or freestyle, but all of that is in this game. In an early interview, Hawk said that he wanted the game to feel like you remember it playing, but not necessarily being exactly accurate. And that was a good call. You can go into the game options and change the move set to match the original games if you want, but it really feels like something is missing if you do. Having all those extra tricks feels like they were always meant to be there. The levels weren't designed for them, which is a flaw they couldn't really avoid, but we'll talk about that in a minute. As far as how the game actually compares to the originals, it feels the most like Pro Skater 4. You can't get off your board like you could in Underground, there's no pressure flips or burnt slides or anything weird like that. But it still feels different. There's more weight to this game than the previous ones had. In the original Pro Skater games, it felt more floaty. You'd be in the air for a long time. In this game, it feels like gravity is a lot stronger, but you can also skate faster and ollie higher, so it bounces out and ends up feeling faster while having the same balance. I think this was a good call. A lot of the game is designed around you wandering around the level looking for things, so having the gameplay feel fast was a good way to go. The biggest thing I was worried about with this game after having played Tony Hawk HD was the stability. In that game you're always glitching around, turning upside down, glitching through things, just having crazy stuff happen for no reason. But in this game, the whole time I played, I don't think I ran into a major glitch like that. Everything runs fine, and it feels reliable. That's a big deal considering the last few games in this series. And how about the presentation? Well, the sound is really well done, and the music is really good. A lot of the classic playlist is back with some new additions too. I can't play any of the music for you, of course, but it's good, and it continues independent of the gameplay. So in the old games, a new song would start every time you restarted, meaning I have exactly two minutes of all the classic songs memorized. Now they keep playing in the menus and everything, which is a much better experience. And the sound effects are great. Every surface has a different rolling sound. Grinding on different surfaces sounds good, although the hollow pipes sound like the Taco Bell gong. <laughs> Listen. But everything is really polished. The menus are well designed. Everything animates in and pops in in a very pleasing way. I'm impressed by that. Let's talk about the graphics. The first thing I wanted to look at when I got the game was the animations. And for the most part, they did a good job, but they screwed some stuff up. Like, Nolly varial kickflips are actually inward heel flips for some reason. Hard flips are still vertical, which I find really annoying, even though it isn't technically wrong. And every Nolly 360 flip, trays, 360 hard flips, 360 inward heel flips, and laser flips are all backward. They just play the regular animation instead of a nose one. Rodney Mullen's nollie flip under flip is all kinds of messed up. It's more like a regular half kick flip, back foot, half under flip, which isn't remotely how that trick looks. But there is some hope that they'll fix it. In the demo, 540 flips didn't flip. Now they overcorrected and they actually flip twice. So hopefully they keep patching this stuff. But one thing they can't patch is new special tricks, which are really lazy. Leo Baker's is a nose manual nollie inward heel flip, which they did in a video right here. This is just a regular combo you could do in the game if you want. So how does that work as a special trick? Well, it, it doesn't because it's the opposite, a Nolly Inward Heel Flip Nose Manual. But what's the point of this? Where's the creativity? The level design though looks incredible. Everything looks really good, except Rodney Mullen's face. Supposedly they brought everyone in and 3D scanned them, but I don't think this looks anything like him. But still, every level is lovingly recreated and well-developed. 
would have been really tempting for Vicarious Visions to want to add new areas or make other changes, but they didn't. Everything that's supposed to be there is here, and it looks a lot better. Some of the levels I was really impressed by are the Hangar, the Mall, and Venice Beach. The Hangar is really glossy and polished in a way that feels authentic. Like, of course this hangar would have nicely polished floors, would have stripes painted on the floor for the workers to find their way around. The wind tunnel looks really great, even though this spot ends up being useless in this game. We'll talk about that in a second. But the level looks really clean and nice, which is a big contrast to the mall. This is probably the best redesign in the game. The mall is abandoned and destroyed. The difference between the hangar and the mall is really impressive. Their designers didn't do the exact same thing. They didn't just remake the level with new technology. They stopped and they thought about how it could be updated. In this case, the mall is empty. And I wonder what the thought process was for this. Maybe they wanted a good reason for it to be empty. You know, it would be weird if everything was nice and pristine, but there were no NPCs in the level. So it could have been that, or maybe it's abandoned because malls are dying out across the country. But either way, they really leaned into it. It almost looks like the site of a zombie apocalypse. It's really well done. And the last level I wanted to highlight is Venice Beach. This is a more typical remake, but they did a lot here to liven up the flat, boring areas. When you think about it, this level has a ton of empty space. The rooftops, the concrete over here by the quarter pipes. So what they do? They made it rain. Does it ever rain over there? Probably not. But from a stylistic standpoint, it was a good call. There are puddles everywhere to break up the monotony, plenty of texture and cracks in the pavement, and it's all really well done. And another design choice that I really appreciate is the drivers. San Francisco, New York, and Minneapolis all have cars driving around, and they made them crazy. They always yelled at you when you got in the way, but now they're drifting around like maniacs. It's brilliant. Hey, I'm driving over here! Sometimes adding in details to the levels has some strange effects though. Like in Chicago, I had to do a wall ride, but there are all these pipes now. It looks like you couldn't possibly do it, but you can. So some of this stuff is just graphical fluff. It plays like it always did. The only thing I disliked about the graphics was the pretty extreme lighting contrast. This might not be so bad playing in HDR, but my PC monitor is standard dynamic range. There feels like there's parts that are so dark that you can barely see anything. And I think it's just to make sure the sunlight feels bright enough. It looks nice, but it doesn't help with the gameplay. Like when you go to the gym, for example, it's hard to see. I keep waiting for the camera to adjust and for it to get brighter, but it just doesn't happen. The hardest thing is finding collectibles though. Hidden in every level is a couple of things. First is a Vicarious Visions logo, which is bright and glowy. They made everything bright and glowy, which helps with the darkness problem. But one collectible you might not notice is a little green alien doll. There's one hidden in every level. I couldn't find a few of them. I looked them up. Sometimes I looked in that exact spot already, but it's just so dark that I couldn't possibly see them. I mean, look at this. How are you supposed to see that? But spoiler alert, when you squash them all, give you a second to skip if you don't want to know. When you squash them all, you unlock the Roswell alien, which is cool. But you also get his gear, which is cooler. I use his deck, which glows in the dark, which is a really cool effect with the extreme lighting of the game. And those Vicarious Visions logos, if you collect them all, you get some gear, like shirts, decks, and stuff. I was expecting a little more than that, but I guess it's fine. There are a lot of unlockables in the game, including decks with animated graphics. You won't see that in Session or Skater XL. I think this is actually really cool. But anyway, let's look at the games themselves. Pro Skater 1 and 2 are broken up into different tours. You pick your skater and you play through them, but only once. I was expecting that you could replay it with every character, like in the originals, but that's not the case this time. All the characters share progress, except for the stat points, which have to be collected on an individual basis. And you unlock character videos based on the stat point collection, not the completion of the actual goals. It makes sense, but it's something you should know before you get started. Playing Pro Skater 1 in this game was a really interesting experience. In order to make both tours match each other, they doubled the amount of challenges that each level has. This usually means additional collectibles, maybe a special gap or a location to get, and it's almost always good. In the warehouse, they added in fire hydrants, which is what this factory makes, apparently. You also have to do one of the channel gaps. In the school, they added in bells, which I found to be a little bit weird. School 2 has bells, so adding them in School 1 almost feels like a ripoff, but it suits the level, obviously, so it's fine. They also added in collectible textbooks and heel flipping the kicker gap. I really love these additions. You know, as someone who played the originals dozens of times, it's almost impossible to recreate the experience of playing them for the first time. 
I know where everything is, you know? But adding in new things for me to try to find for the first time makes this feel more authentic than an exact remake, if that makes sense. Minneapolis has popcorn, which I'm not sure the significance of, and it also has three roof caps. One of these would have been really confusing if I didn't get lucky. First one is here, which is a gap you have to do to get popcorn anyway, so there's nothing wrong with that. The second one is the same gap you have to do to get the secret tape. But where's that last one? It's here. You jump off the roof and you hopefully land on this rail at a 90 degree angle. On my first playthrough, my stats were low and I landed right on it, which was lucky. On my second one, my stats were already full. It actually took me a few attempts to get it. This is probably the worst edition. I'm not gonna show you everything because I want you to have some fun looking for this stuff yourself. But overall, it's really good. And I think I prefer the Pro Skater 1 stuff over the Pro Skater 2 because of it. I take that back. This tour still has downhill jam in it, and this level is the worst. I mean, this gap still barely works. I glanced off of it and fell to my death a few times. This gap got completely ruined. You're supposed to be able to wall ride and transition right into the grind, but now you hug the wall and wrap around it. And this gap doesn't make sense. One of the new challenges is to do a Madonna over this gap, but how do you trigger it? Sometimes you ollie the whole thing and it doesn't count. And once I only got it to count by transferring between the pipes, I don't know. If this level was deleted from human history and we all forgot that it ever existed, humanity would be better off. But this is a very faithful remake, so we're stuck with it. Let's look at the Pro Skater 2 section of the game. This is an exact remake, except for the fact that the original version had cash icons everywhere. So you'd do all the challenges, and then you'd have 10 or more locations of icons to try to find. Now, all you have is stat points, there's two to four per level, the alien doll and the Vicarious Visions logo. That makes some places useless, like the wind tunnel and the hangar. It looks pretty, but what's the point? They could have put a stat point in here, at least, but just think about if you were playing this game for the first time, and you stumble on this new thing, and you figure out how to open it up, you go in there, and then there's nothing. The Carlsbad Gap in School 2 is the same. You can get over there, and then there's nothing there. I know that standardizing these two games made it so that they had to ditch the cash icon idea, but these levels actually have a little bit less to do than the original. And remember the poo piles from the bull run? Most of them were just poop, but the green ones had money in them. And now there's poop for no reason. They put a stat point in there so that there's at least a reason to go into the bull run area, but some of the charm is gone. It's not a big loss, but it's noticeable for someone like me who played the old version so many times. But with that aside, everything feels familiar and you'll be right at home as a fan of the PlayStation 1 version. One thing that's definitely different though is a difficulty. Remember how hard Philadelphia was? Getting up to the roof here to drain the fountain is... Oh, that was first try. Okay, but getting the secret tape is actually a pretty big challenge because you have to hold your balance all the way... Oh, I did both of these first try. The score challenges are also really easy. I was hoping there was going to be a sick difficulty mode like some of the later games in the series had that would bump it up, make it a bit more of a challenge, but we didn't get that. So you finish both tours and nothing happens. You get a little splash screen and it's over. It took me a grand total of just a hair over two hours to beat both tours. This is the part that I think is the biggest problem for potential buyers who are on the fence. If you just want to beat the game, it's not going to take you very long. You only have to beat it once. And I blasted through getting the stat points with my creative character in about 25 minutes. I could do that with every character and get their videos if I want, but that just feels like work. It does seem like different characters have different stat point locations though. I think vert skaters have one set of locations and street skaters have a different one, but still, that's not much additional stuff. So what did they do to extend the life of the game beyond those couple of hours? A few things. First is the challenges. These are outside of the actual level goals. These are separate, almost like trophies or achievements. But it'll be small things like doing all of your special tricks in one combo, getting a certain number multiplier, things like that. And there are hundreds of them. Every character has their own challenges and their overall challenges. Completing these earns you money and you can use that to buy decks and graphics and stuff like that. On my second playthrough, I made a create a skater and my options were pretty limited. I had tons of money though, so I could have gone through, bought lots of shirts and all that for my character. I didn't though, because I'm lazy. So completing all those challenges could probably take you a few weeks, but what else is there? Well, the cheats are back. This is one thing that modern games don't really do anymore. The classic games had all kinds of button combination cheats that could unlock stuff like big head mode, moon physics, other stuff like that. Those are all back, but now they're toggleable in the menu. And there are filters too. If you want to be a giant skate around in sepia tone, you can. 
perfect balance, always special, cheats like that are all available, but you can't use them to complete challenges. And I'm glad that these are back. I don't see myself playing with them that much, but I'm an old man now. Back when I was a kid, I could only afford one game every few months. I would have messed around with this stuff for hours and played every single last thing. So I'm glad that that's there for other people. And there is another tour, kind of. It's a place where you can do single sessions, free skate, and speed runs, which is a perfect addition to the series. I'm really glad this is here. So here's how it works. You start a level, and instead of the timer counting down, it now counts up. You complete all the goals in one run, and your final time gets uploaded to the leaderboards. I don't care much about the competitive side of it, but from a gameplay perspective, it puts a whole new spin on the career. So traditionally, my thought process when I'm playing the game is like, okay, this time I'm gonna get the hall passes, I'm gonna kickflip TC's roof gap, and I'm gonna get the high score. Next time I'll get the skate letters and the secret tape. But now you don't group things like that. I try to do everything in one location before I move on. So I might get the two textbooks, the one bell, and that table before getting the secret tape, which transfers me to the next area where I'll get a couple more of each of them. It's a new twist on the way you play it, and I like it. All of my Pro Skater 1 footage was taken in this mode because my original playthrough's footage got messed up in a Windows update that made my bitrate super terrible for no reason. But this mode is fun, and I think this is where the bulk of the replayability comes from. You can replay the tours as every character to get their stat points, and then try to get the fastest times in the speedrun. It's fun, and I don't see myself really missing the option to replay the main career completely from the beginning with this being here instead. But this mode made me really hate that roof gap I was talking about before. I got all my stat points first because they're only in the normal tour mode. But then getting this gap is stupidly hard, but okay, that's enough about that one challenge. Another big replayability aspect is the create a park mode. Something that I just genuinely have no interest in. I'll play the top levels every now and then, but I don't think you're going to see me uploading my own stuff anytime soon. That just doesn't appeal to me in any game. But I'll show you what a couple of these levels look like to give you an idea of what kind of things are possible. And while I do that, I'll talk about the biggest fault in the game, the level design. I know these levels are classics, they were all amazing in their time, I'm not denying that at all. It's just that this engine with the reverts and the spine transfers and the wall plants, it just really doesn't match. I'll give you an example. Here's Roswell from Pro Skater 1. If you grind this rail, you gap out into this building where you can do nothing. It's a sharp turn, so you can't easily land into manual and keep the combo going. There's nowhere to grind either. This game wasn't made for huge combos back in the day. You'd really spend most of your time on vert in these competitions, but the game feels like it really wants you to do that stuff, so there's a bit of a disconnect. And there's not much they could have done about that. Upgrading the engine from the Tony Hawk 2 engine to the Tony Hawk 4 one, roughly, which is what they did, that was the right call. Keeping the levels as original as possible without modifying them, that was also the right call. So there's really nothing they could have done to avoid this, but it does still come across kind of as bad design. The thing that I'm more looking forward to and the thing that I would have preferred more is a Tony Hawk 6. You know, and, and maybe that's gonna come next. I really hope so. Take this engine that you've made, which is solid, everything works, it feels really good, and make levels that work with it. You know, and take full advantage of the tricks that you can do. Uh, that's what I really wanna see. And I'm a little worried about where the series is gonna go from here because they did the first two games in one. They can't do three and four at the same time because three has the two minute timers just like the these first two. And then four is like an open world type of thing. You talk to somebody and then you do a challenge that they tell you about. And there's I think 21 challenges per level in Tony Hawk 4. They can't make those two fit. Tony Hawk 3 should have been in this game and hopefully they make that a downloadable thing in the future. I really hope so. I would pay 10 bucks for that. Uh, that would be really cool if they added Tony Hawk 3 in there, but ideally they're gonna work on something new next So overall bottom line is this game worth your time? Yes, but keep in mind that you can beat the whole thing in two hours And if you're really into the completionist stuff, you're really into unlocking everything and buying stuff and finding where all the hidden things are and unlocking the videos and Building your own parks if you're into all that kind of stuff. You're gonna have a great time with it if you just want to get through it, there's not a ton there. But overall, I would say that the game is really good and they knocked it out of the park.
So that's it for this time. I'm going to be reviewing all the new skateboarding games as they come out. Maybe I'll cover more in depth into different parts of this game um, as things get discovered. I haven't 100% of the game yet, but I, I will in time. So yeah, that's it for now. Uh, if you enjoyed the old games at all, if you enjoyed Tony Hawk 2X, if you enjoy skateboarding, you're probably gonna get something out of this game. So that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.